the long-term review of the Kineva SL. 18 kilograms, 170 front and rear, six-way geometry changes, and it has to be one of the best looking e-bikes on the market, but it only has 35 newton meters of power. Is that enough for you? Let's find out. Right, is welcome back to Sam's Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and unfortunately, it's been raining for the last 10 days in Madrid, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to review the Kinevo SL, which I've been lucky enough to ride for the last nine months. And riders, I've got a huge favor to ask. If you have not subscribed to Sam's Bikes, please do so. Like this video, comment on this video. It really does help out those algorithms on YouTube. And before we start the review, a massive shout out to the sponsors, Insta360, making the best, the smallest action camera on the market. And riders, link in the show notes on where to get the best offers on Insta360 products available. And of course, the long-term sponsors, Schwabi, making the best electric mountain bike tires on the market. And also riders, we are giving away an electric mountain bike this month. Go over to my channel, where you see this thumbnail, click on that and you'll find out how to enter. Also riders, before we jump into the review, I've made two other comparisons because I know a lot of people will be looking at the Levo SL versus Kinevo SL or the Levo Gen 3 versus Kinevo SL. Link is in the show notes for those videos. Okay, onto the Kinevo SL, which I've been lucky enough to ride for the last nine months. I bloody love the Kinevo SL. It's such a confident, capable bike. I was riding the other day with my mate Yobba. He was on a Levo SL and I was on the Kineva SL. Yobba and I are pretty much the same on the bike. And I was following him down pretty gnarly track. And what I saw was he was riding the Levo SL to an inch of its life. The bike was screaming at him. I mean, he was keeping up and going fast. But then for me on the Kineva SL, I felt like I was in second gear with classical music running. I know that might sound a bit funny, but this bike just is so much more capable if you put it in the right situations. So clearly the Kinevo SL is a super enduro downhill rig. We've got full carbon frame. We've got six way geometry change. We have 170 at the front and 170 at the back with a six bar FSR suspension, which is like a magic carpet. We also have 35 newton meters from the SL motor and 320 watts of power internally with a 160 watt range extender option. In the S4, which is kind of a large, we're looking at reach numbers of 485, chain state 447, 443, depending on the flip chip, and head angle 62 and a half, 63 and a half, 64 and a half. And this all comes in 18 kilos which is super impressive. And it's even more impressive to think that the Enduro, which is specializes very similar bike to the Kinevo, comes in at 14 or 15 kilos. And then the full powered e-bike, the Levo Gen 3, comes in at around 22, 23. So the Kinevo SL fits right in between. As I said, the KSL has a six way geometry change. So what does that mean? So it comes with a headset cup, well, a spare headset cup, and you have plus one and minus one. And then at the back here, you have a flip chip, so you can go from high or low, or I say short or long. So in return, that gives you six different geo settings. For me, I actually use it quite a lot. To change out the front takes about five minutes, and to change around the back it takes another five minutes. So in 10 minutes, you have a completely different feeling bike. And for trail riding, I actually ride this at 64 and a half and the high setting. And for enduro slash downhill, I run it in the middle setting, 63 and a half, and at the low setting at the back. I have tried 62 and a half, but for my style of riding, I just find the steering a little bit too slow. And also, I'm not riding really steep trails. The KSL has to be one of the best looking e-bikes on the market. And it's so minimalistic, you can barely tell it's an e-bike. Super small SL motor, the mastermind here, 
and a remote, it is really minimalistic, but this means nothing unless the bike rides well. And wow, riders, let me tell you, it's an absolute beast. I don't think I've found the limit of this bike. The bike's definitely found my limit. And actually at the bike park, I find it a little bit scary because when you let off the brakes, it just wants to go. I think, yeah, I haven't found the limit of this bike yet. So I spent a fair bit of time at my bike park on the KSL and it's an absolute beast. It's pretty much like having a downhill bike. I think maybe a little bit better than having a downhill bike because it's more planted with that extra weight. I found the suspension, the six bar FSR, to be like a magic carpet. Super easy to set up with the suspension calculator. I went straight off that and what I did notice is I had really good small bump, really good mid stroke, but I was blowing through the top end of the travel. So I added one extra token, but that is kind of more my style. I like to run like a pretty progressive suspension setup. And when it did get steep, I did get a bit of a buzzed ass, which scared me the first couple of rides because I jumped forward, which can be dangerous. If you're buying this bike, be careful of that. But after like two or three rides, I adjusted my position and I stopped getting that. And you riders out there are probably thinking, hey Sam, why don't you try a mullet? I did try a mullet, but I think it's better as a 29er. And riders, if you are going to try a mullet, make sure you put 160 cranks on there because 170s was not a good idea at all. And for enduro riding, I was riding the S4 with 485 reach. It's a great enduro bike. If you're gonna be riding really tight switchbacks or really tight trails, you might benefit from sizing down because when it got really tight, I did find it harder to muscle in and around those corners. And trail riding at my local trail center, a lot of you riders out there are gonna say 170 front and back. You're gonna be overbiked. It's not gonna climb as well as something like a Levo SL, but this climbs better. You got more traction. And actually the main thing I noticed between this bike and the Levo SL, this is more versatile with the six way geometry change. And also the thing that really sold me was when I was hitting the same tracks, I just felt I could push harder into the corners on the Kineva SL. I'm gonna put that down to the longer wheelbase for sure. And jumping like any super enduro e-bike, you have to push a little bit harder because with the 170 at the front, when you hit the lip, it actually sucks a bit of the lip away. So you have to push a little bit harder and pull a little bit harder than something like a trail bike, but it definitely jumps well. And for someone that's not a confident jumper, this is really good because when it lands, you obviously have 170 front and back, longer wheelbase, so it's a more stable bike to maybe learn to jump on. The KSL uses the SL 1.1 motor exclusively to specialize. It has 35 newton meters and it really likes to be in cadences around 80 to 100. That's where you're gonna get the most power from the motor. It's definitely not a silent motor. It's probably a little bit more like a Shimano E8000. It's definitely not as quiet as a Bros or a Shimano EP8. I think a major misconception for the SL motor is the small battery, 320 watt. A lot of riders out there are gonna think you're gonna get rubbish range, but that's not true. You put in more effort yourself because it has less power. But I did a range test on the Levo SL and the Levo Gen 3, and I got 56 Ks and around a thousand meters of vertical climbing out of the Levo SL with an internal 320 watt battery. And the similar test on the Levo Gen 3 with a 700 watt battery and a 90 newton meter motor, I got 1,500 meters of vertical climbing and around 80 kilometers. So as you can see, riders, if you put the range extender on the Kineva SL and you work a bit harder, you should be getting similar ranges to a Gen 3 with a 700 watt battery. And now this takes me on to the most important part of the review. Who is the Kineva SL for? It's an absolute fantastic bike, but it definitely is not for everyone. If you're working too much or too busy at home, you can't get the training in and you still want to ride with your mates on the weekend enduro riding and you can't keep up, then the Kinevo SL will definitely give you a help and it's definitely a great option. If you're a super fit rider and you want to ride with a full powered e-bike group, you can definitely do it on the Kinevo SL. You're going to need the range extender because you're going to spend a lot of the time in turbo and you're going to have to tell your mates to slow it down a little bit, but if you're fit, and you get the range extender, you can definitely do it. And if you're a purist and you're riding on your own a lot and you want a little bit of help in the mountains, but you don't want to go to the full powered e-bikes, 
This is fantastic because you don't lose that natural feeling. E-bikes, full powered e-bikes are great, they're amazing, but it is different. So this is kind of right in between. And now riders, who it's not for? It is definitely not for someone that's not very fit, that wants to ride with their full powered e-bike group because your mates aren't gonna love you, you're not gonna love the experience. I personally would go out and get a full powered e-bike this is definitely for a fitter rider. Specialized have done a fantastic job on the Kniva SL. It is a masterpiece. You got Mission Control, you got Mastermind, which in my opinion is the best system on the market. You can do so much customized tuning. It really works amazing. And the six-way geometry change, definitely a masterpiece. Definitely pushing the market in the right direction, but it's not all gravy. And these are the things I would change. Okay, first off, 170 cranks. I know where they're going, it's a more pedal bike, but I think it really should have 165 or even 160s. The high speed rebound is right in here, and it's super hard to change, almost impossible to change out in the trail. You need a long Allen key. This definitely isn't Specialized's fault because Fox changed the design of the X2 last year, but it definitely is a bit of a pain. I love the low standover height, but the seat post doesn't go down any further than this. I mean, I'd love to see some type of work around here to get it come lower down to the actual seat clamp. And I'm gonna say it again, left-handed water bottles are a must, especially on the top spec models, because there's 15% left-handers in the world, like me. And I wish Specialized would make thicker gauge spokes because I did break a few spokes. But with the rims, I found the rims really tough. I reckon I've done about 500 Ks on these wheels. I have Kush Core inside and I recommend anyone with carbon wheels to put Kush Core or some type of rim protector. And I'm running Magic Mary front and back in gravity casing, so definitely a good combo there. So I've been testing the top spec, the S-Works, and I'm gonna say I'm pretty happy with the whole build. The only thing that's a little bit disappointing on the Levo Gen 3 comes from Magura MT7s, which I absolutely love. And I had to change them out because I just don't like codes. I don't get on well with codes. And I like to have the same brakes on all my bikes. But yeah, that's the only thing I'd probably change. Okay, now let's talk sizing. And I think this is a really important part. I'm 183 centimeters and I've been riding the S4. And I picked the S4 because I wanted this as like my super enduro downhill bike. But if this was my do it all bike, so the S4 comes in a reach of 485. If I was going to be riding more trails, more tighter stuff, jumping more, having this as my all-round sort of trail slash enduro bike, I probably would have sized down to the S3 with the reach of 460. Just think it would have made the bike a little bit more playful, but clearly not as planted on the super fast downhills. The Kineva SL is available in three models. The Comp, 7,900 euros. The Expert, 10,000 euros. And the S-Works for 15,000 euros. If it was me, I reckon I'd go the Expert at 10,000 in the yellow. I think it looks awesome. And also, you're pretty much getting the same build as the S-Works. Okay, you're getting less gold and you're not getting carbon rims but you're getting the same suspension, same motor, same battery, same geometry. So I'd probably go the expert and make a few upgrades myself. And now down to the million dollar question. Would I buy the Kinevo SL with my hard earned cash today? It's a super hard question. I'm gonna say I'm not the fittest rider out there and all my mates have full powered e-bikes. So I'm gonna say if I could only have one e-bike, I don't think it would be the Kineva SL. I'd like to see it have a little bit more power because I find it pretty hard to keep up with full powered e-bike riders on this bike. Saying that, if you are fitter, it's a great option. And also, if you're gonna ride on your own, I would be taking this bike on my own on all my rides. I just really love the way it feels and how you still feel like you're riding a normal mountain bike. Anyway, riders, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this long, long-term review of the Kineva SL. And if you have any questions, please put them in the show notes. I'm happy to help. And riders, you know it. If you have not subscribed to Sam's Bikes, please do so. Share it with like-minded people. And we're going to see you next week.